Hello, 60 and Me readers. This is Anthony Cirillo. Uh, today we're going to talk about an interesting topic called elder speak. Uh, one of the things that's becoming apparent during this pandemic uh, is that um, the elders, the conversation around elders, uh, have uh, really taken a turn that's been disturbing to me, this whole uh, idea of elderly in decline and being expendable. And uh, a lot of times uh, we amplify that through how we speak. Um, and it's kind of interesting uh, in talking to my expert uh, for this article, Anna Corwin, uh, who uh, works at St. Mary's College of California, um, this idea of how we speak to elders uh, is uniquely North American as uh, we get into uh, the article. But, you know, elders speak. It's when an older adult is spoken to by healthcare workers, service personnel, or neighbors as if she is a child with limited understanding, right? So it sounds like baby talk. You know, we've heard, uh, you know, how we talk to babies, oh, coochie, coochie, you know, a lot of times we do that with elders. So there's this elevated pitch. Um, we slow down our speech as if everybody has trouble hearing and it's not universally true. Uh, we use words like sweetie and honey. And what, as I mentioned, and Anna revealed to me, which I found fascinating, is that this is a North American phenomenon. We don't see baby talk around the world. And that reflects how other cultures, um, you know, um, treat their elders and respect their elders. And it's a problem for a number of reasons. When you do this uh, to older adults, they don't like it. It feels condescending. And it also increases their loneliness. And when it does that, because they feel isolated, because you, you know, you're, you're speaking to them in a way that um, you know, is, is going to shut them down, essentially. And that leads to bad health outcomes. It also leads to cognitive decline. And that makes sense, right? Because if you're not engaging with an elder uh, in a respectful manner with sometimes complex language that recognizes their abilities, uh, they're going to shut down. They're not going to use a lot of their, you know, mental faculties, and that's going to actually diminish their capabilities and lead to quicker onsets of dementia and related conditions. So Anna actually learned a lot of her lessons from Catholic nuns that she spent time with, and she looked at how the older um, older nuns were treated by the younger nuns who were caregivers, and that she had three strategies that she used. One was to use stories. So the nuns would go in, state what they were doing, and jump into a story. They might start by saying, hey, I ran into Betty in the hallway, and she reminded me of this or that. They wouldn't be that complex of a story, but a story nonetheless, because they were using more complex language than sweetie, honey, or raising your voice and talking like a baby. It did not require, and that's the other beauty of this, it doesn't necessarily require a response uh, from uh, the care recipient. A lot of times these nuns were uh, obviously people who had some types of dementia. Obviously, we're speaking of uh, others who are cognitively capable. Uh, we don't have to run into that problem, and uh, they can respond, and you can engage into a, a dialogue. She also said that the nuns would tell jokes that were culturally relevant, uh, you know, that nuns would, uh, would, uh, would say, you know, a nun and a priest and a rabbi walk into a bar or whatever it might say. And the other thing they would do at the end of their uh, session with uh, the care recipients was bestow it blessing. Now, that's pretty unique to nuns, uh, but I would say that one of the things that we can do is maybe express gratefulness for the person we're taking care of and, um, and for the things that uh, we are grateful for in our lives. A lot of times these nuns would, you know, the care recipients would mumble something, but it recognized that they understood that a prayer or a blessing was taking place, and that was their way of acknowledging it. So, uh, as again, uh, you know, one of the things about aging and our culture, this was an interesting thing that she found. The nuns have a whole different way of looking at aging. You know, again, in this culture, and especially with this virus, we've been looking at aging as something that uh, is about decline, uh, as if there it's a problem that we need to solve some way, or a moral issue that we need to solve. Uh, and yet, um, you know, our concept of aging impacts how we communicate with older adults. 
the end of life to the nuns is another stage of life as natural as any other stage. You know, we're comfortable imagining children preparing for adulthood as a sort of natural thing that children should be anticipating. The same thing with the nuns. It's not that they're running into bad behaviors and trying to force an end of life, but they're recognizing it that this is just another way to look at it and we shouldn't be fretting over it as much. And if we have this kind of attitude toward it, it would actually help the way we communicate with our elders and actually in turn, as we found out from the beginning of this article, uh, would enhance their life and probably their quality of life and extend their life. So we know that uh, stories and jokes and blessings and expressing gratitude can extend to all facets of life, not just the nuns, uh, but it's kind of interesting when we speak to people in a respectful manner, uh, recognizing their level of ability uh, we can help uh, to ease that isolation and engage them more and improve their quality of life. And that's essentially what we talked about this month in our article. Thanks.